Greeting interwebs, it is Jack K, and welcome for another edition of Let's Go Eevee. Last time we did some bonus parts around this area. Clearing out. I just showcased the Pokemon Go Park a bit, and since we never showed off the route to the left, so I just take a quick scroll for there. Today, though, I think there's some other bonus areas. If we actually have access to a town map, they can just pull up from here and show y'all. Route 19, and I guess to a lesser degree 20, are like two routes that I rarely get to explore in Kanto games. As a kid, I always would like, I think there was a period of time as a kid that I would like go to this route one time and, well, for reasons that are part of the thing, never actually like bother to come here after realizing you just go from Pallet Town and Surf Down afterwards. Also, I gotta remember to swap around the buddy that's following me around, because we're going across water again, so I really want to showcase that particular ability. Also, I messed around with the team a little bit, messed around with Pokemon moves, so it better suit all the surfing that we would be doing for the next couple areas. Of course you have Psybeam. Uh, how much? Wow, I'm not even that much hi higher in level, and yet our good friend here just take the hint like it was nothing. Impressive. Why does this gold deck just have all of the annoying moves today? I'm kind of like... You might be able to tell... I don't want to jump the gun, but I'm not really looking forward to the area coming up ahead, and I didn't exactly go into this recording session with the greatest of attitudes. Not like to the degree of not wanting to stream all together, but it's kind of just a situation where oh, I'm kind of draining this area. Things outside weren't exactly in the best state of condition before going in for the stream and all that, but I've been putting off actually finishing up Let's Go Eevee for a while as is. So I figure I, I kind of push myself with the hopes of once I go through and get in the swing of things, it'll get better for later out. I guess part of it's like also that we're just so close to the end game, and it feels like I've run out of stories to really talk about. I guess I can talk a little bit about what's going on today. Beforehand, we gotta do something very important. Come on now, Hoopalele! I mean, we have a Gyarados, we might as well utilize it wherever we can. Also, I realize, like, the trainers, eh, don't exactly offer too much. And these areas can go by a lot quicker if I just skip them. So, I think I've showcased enough trainers throughout the course of our time playing this game. I could probably skip one or two and nothing of major value will be lost. That said, it'd be nice if I could like... Oh, we're already here. Psst. Sure, smart Alec. Theme Foam Islands. But how did I get those items over there? I'll resume story time a little bit, but I got to know. Gotta double check to make sure it's not something I'm completely overlooking. I'm just gonna go on a whim and say that, like, we get to the other side of Seafoam Islands, and that's where we get the items. And that's, this is the thing about Seafoam Islands, since we're already here in that. Are you a friend, foe, or friendly potion delivery service? Oh, free heal. I'll take that, too. Let's see who I want out in front. It's like I could use the experience the most, but also is part grass. And I think we'll just be relying a lot on... Since we don't exactly have an electric type of our own, we're going to be relying a lot on the 
electric moves that our team members have. Come on, Pokeball Plus. It's not that hard to click on an item. Now, are these jumpable cliffs? No, they are not. But I think this is the first instance that we've run into the Pokemon Seal. You know, you always wanted to use a Dugon in a playthrough. A part of the issue is just like, I, you run into it so late that I can't really find a good opportunity to squeeze it onto a team. If we can actually get one in a Pokeball though, I wouldn't mind like showcasing it in the call decks. So hopefully this will this one will be on cue. Well, I got Pokeballs to burn, Seal. Why don't you just be a good boy? Be a good little seal and actually stay in the ball. Not make me waste my great balls. I swear, if you run after all of this. We may have to pull out the player too. Don't make me. Do not make me dual wield Pokeballs into your face, little Dugon. You are not worthy of an Ultra Ball. Second verse, same as the first. I I feel bad enough wasting Great Balls on this thing. I don't exactly feel up to wasting Pokeballs on it, but I do want to just catch it for the novelty if nothing else. There we go. As I was saying, Dugon is a Pokemon I wouldn't mind using, but like you get so late in the game, even in games where you have access to the Fishing Rod and Water Pokemon in general in the Kanto region. It just never really feels like I can find Seal and his family soon enough to actually use it on a team. Like around this point is the point where I'm actually pretty confident. I usually have my team pretty solid at this point. That little slowpoke. Try and remember the earliest point that you run in, I run into you. Maybe it's Safari Zone? Maybe it's something a little sooner. Either way, I think this is our first slow poke in this game. And I might be thinking about Pokemon Gold and Silver, where you get them kind of early. There's a literal well for slow pokes in those games. A lot earlier on. Will you be the lucky fro, Mr. Slowpoke? There we go. I did catch that coach trainer off the corner of my eyes, so, and I am kind of curious what they're up to. So I think that'll be the next thing I address. But yeah, like, there's probably like some more recent Pokemon games that just aren't coming to mind. The seal kind of fits. And no, I'm not really surprised finding a coach trainer here. Yeah, let's be it. Sorry, I was just caught a little off breath by the possibility that you actually exist, like, actually come here daily and all that. But then again, like, all the NPCs, you're all kind of just, like, around here all the time, so it's not too shocking. Oh, is this going to be Gen Girl versus the World type of day? Because I'm down with that. And, yeah, I was just talking about how I never got an opportunity to use Double Edge. So if I survive this, this could be our moment. This could be our day for Gen Girl to actually make use of that move. Well, I mean, we have a ground type. I might as well capitalize on it. Coming back, Jen Girl. You tried, but the luck of the draw is just not on your side. And that's kind of like part of the reason I'm going for this playthrough. I want to like use as Try to make sure that like none of the Pokemon I used were Pokemon that I really used in previous playthroughs. To some degree, like even including like past attempts to actually get through the Kanto region for YouTube and all of that. Like definitely never used the Doug tr Doug Trio minus like the it was gonna be a thing for Yellow versus Leaf Green, but that probably never got far enough to actually really get the Doug Trio, so I don't count it. Never used an Arbok. 
don't recall ever using a victory bell. Never really used Gyarados because I never really got into that Pokemon until Pokemon Go. And Clefable, I might have used a Clefable in the playthrough before. Yeah, that was kind of silly that I didn't just swap right away, but I wasn't paying enough attention to the text to actually realize what they were swapping to. Besides, we can just swap into Victory Bell here now, take the hit, go from there. Like, is your gimmick, sir, the fact that all you, your Pokemon have super powerful moves with lower accuracy that kind of make me feel annoyed when they actually hit, for, not only hit first try, but paralyze, and I get the fully paralyzed effect. Because that would be a fun gimmick. I'm sure there's nothing I have, have to suffer through, especially not recently. Yeah, the only Pokemon on this team that I've used before, or would commonly use in my playthroughs, and this is including like personal playthroughs as well, is Eevee, but like, I, using Eevee in this game is very different from any other game. So, it would, for the sake of a playthrough, it would be a shame not to showcase the opportunities you get from that starter Pokemon. And Clefable, but I don't remember if I ever actually finished a playthrough with Clefable. I know it was like a couple times in Kanto games in particular that I've always wanted to use a Clefairy. Pick one out from Mount Moon, but never actually finished going through the whole game with it. So, I feel... I'm not 100% sure, but I feel pretty confident that Gambalea will be the first Clefable to actually make it through the end of one of my adventures with me. And actually, like, play a prominent role throughout the whole adventure. And I guess, like, since I'm on that tangent, I might as well talk a little bit about other recent things between my choices for the team in general. A lot of it's like leftover from idea party member ideas from Yellow versus Leaf Green. Nah, there's no reason to stick around. Let me just before I resume that story, I kind of just want to check up here. Are you all fightable trainers? I mean, these guys are kind of weird to me. I get it, I don't get it at the same time. All right. I guess I might as well talk about this now rather than later. A whole the whole gimmick with this is we're gonna have to push these rocks around. Oh, I see. You have to. That's actually convenient yet a little more annoying than the other games. I was just trying to, just trying to run up to it and push it. And in the process, I just flat out drop. Joy. <laughs> but no, in this game you have to like... Tap A in front of the boulder and then push it. I definitely see the perks of this. Like, I personally find just going up against it and pushing it more convenient. But at least this way, you're not likely to make a mistake. Especially with like, controls of this thing. I want to keep blaming the Pokeball Plus, but I know I'm kind of just like holding it weird, and that's part of the issue too. So we keep pushing this along, and eventually it's going to fall in the water down below. And once we push enough of these pillars down the water below, we'll be able to surf our way through. And I guess this goes in. <laughs> This is what happens if you don't block off the water. There's like a current that just pushes you all the way to the end. And we have to just presume. I wouldn't say again because I require imply that we're actually just resetting it completely. But you gotta like backtrack over find the stuff you haven't pushed down and all that. Now, the reason I kind of like have childhood dread from this place was I never fi finished this. I never got to the other end. I got to the point where we found the legend where I found the legendary Pokemon that we're looking for 
and caught it several times over. But even despite doing that, I never got to the other side of Simbar Island. Well, maybe I have in more recent playthroughs and I just don't remember, but I remember more of my childhood of not being able to get to Simbar Isles. Or get for Seafoam Miles more than the other way around. <sighs> what am I doing? I just fell down again. <sighs> what am I supposed to do? I c do you guys see where I was getting stumped though? Because it feels like I was just going up. I got up as far as I could, and there's just nowhere else for me to go. Danger, fast current. Thanks for the warning now. What's the, what is someone doing putting signs up in this area anyways? The water is moving. You want to use secret technique? I think if we try this, it's just going to push us back. Kind of like that. So yeah, if we want to like make any progress in this place, we got to like find those pillars and push them down. And I'm trying to remember where I left off before I kind of got on the tangent of scribe making sure we're all on the same page of what the heck I'm doing around here. Yeah, I guess the team comp of the team. Forgive me if I'm repeating myself. I, I ask... I, I forget if I mentioned it before, but I want to make sure that I at least mention it once. Because... Oh, this is pretty cool. Surprised we don't have it already, but... I'm glad we finally got it. This is probably one of my better ice type moves in the game. And unfortunately we don't seem to have too many options of who can learn it. Like I'll I i do not mind having as an option for Gambalea. But Hoopa lately learning it is kinda useless. Gyarados can't learn fly, right? Just to make sure. I guess, like, that's not part of the reason why I never used Gyarados in the past. Like, what, it, I never really, like, was a big fan of, like, intimidating Pokemon. Like, even not even just, like, them being intimidating to me. I just didn't find them cool the way the other people were. They just... It's kind of one of those weird situations where, like, just because you look tough doesn't mean you look cool. But Gyarados wore him up to me as I was playing Pokemon Go. Hoopalele, the OG... Gyarados, for example. Always just a thing. And I wanted to make sure I use Gyarados in Let's Go specifically because of that. And I bring this up because back in the Yellow vs. Leaf Green days of this Kanto adventure, I was originally planning on using a Star Army because back then I'd be playing Yellow and Fire Red, Red and Leaf Green. And I thought it'd be a good Pokemon to showcase like the opportunity, the strength. Showcase the differences between psychic types in the first generation and in the third generation. But of course, when I have a Gyarados already on the team, having a Star Me on top of that would be redundant. So, some maybe someday I'll actually use a Star Me, but unfortunately today's not exactly going to be that day. Hey, maybe it... yes. I just explained that to the viewers. I, I, I sometimes complain, but I can't, but I do appreciate these sort of dialogue clues. Complain, make fun of, it's kind of like hard to differentiate between the two sometimes. But this is what I mean just about the magic of RPGs, like giving you examples of what to do. And I think I'm going to try to catch a Jinx again because I didn't actually showcase it off in the call decks. I probably won't get as lucky and get in the first Pokeball throw like it did last time, but we can cross our fingers and hope. A two, a three. I was just getting ready to put the Pokeball up on the mic. You know what? I got 76 Ultra Balls. This is the type of thing you would use an Ultra Ball on. We'll deal with it.
what else can we talk about from the yellow versus leaf green team? Glitch Hiss, I'm kind of like trying to figure out. I don't even remember why I picked up Glitch Hiss. I, besides the fact that it was a, another one of those Pokemon that I never really use. Like, I don't even think Glitch Hiss was anywhere in the cards for yellow versus leaf green. Which reminds me, I think that's because my original plan was to have, for the grass poison type, my original plan was to use Bulbasaur slash Victory Bell to showcase how you get a starter. In Yellow Leaf Green you get a starter, each of the starters, throughout the course of the adventure. And I thought it'd be a fun to like have Pikachu be your starter in Yellow. And leaf green, like, I you gotta pick a starter anyways. So I just would pick Poke Bulbasaur and leaf green right off the bat, and showcase a little bit of difference between having the normal old G starter and having Pikachu for a starter and yellow. And be, once I actually get the Bulbasaur and Pokemon Yellow, the timelines would realign themselves, and they'd be in both versions of the game. Both the yellow playthrough and the uh, leaf green playthrough I would be doing for the project. So because I already had a grass poison type in the works, there wasn't really any plans to use a poison type, but I mean, let's just kind of one art my way into my heart with the whole shenanigans that I have. Plus again, just the fact that it's a Pokemon that I normally wouldn't use is a good way to have it. It's a good excuse in of itself. No! Well, at least I know once I do this, we'll probably be good to actually make our way to Articuno. And I think those other pillars that I saw in the background but couldn't figure out how to get to would be a good case. Would be the case that I'm looking for in actually getting out of this island, not just getting to the legendary Pokemon like I usually do when I get for this place. Mm. Maybe I can cut until I get back to where I was. If I actually remember to do so. I have no idea how long it's going to take for us to get back there, though, so I think I'm better off just going on with my story. So, minus, like, order, minus the fact that, like, we're pretty much alternating between Glissus and 69 for our poison type slot, I think the team's pretty solid as is. And it's kind of weird. Kind of weird. I picked up both a uh, victory bell and an R block, considering how I had no plans to use the poison type in the old G playthroughs of the Kanto region, specifically because I already had a completely different grass poison type in mind. But victory bell was again a Pokemon that I never really got to use too often, and you can get it pretty early in this game. So I kind of just like stuck in my mind as a Pokemon to. Keep and carry it through. Now, this is the problem with Seafoam Islands. I probably get more loss here than I do in, like, the Pokemon Silph Coat. I don't know why I was trying keep trying to call it the Pokemon Tower when I knew the Pokemon Tower was something completely different. Hmm, 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 hmm. It'd be nice if I could, like, remember. I got a feeling if I follow these holes, I'll be able to figure out where I left off. There we go. Will this at least stop the water current so I can actually surf around here as I please? Indeed, it will. So I guess we can go on with story time, I guess. Wait, can I walk across that? 
Ah, it kind of looks like it's at just the right height that I could jump down, walk across them, and jump over to get to the other side. But I guess surfing over to the other side works as just as well. And I said I brought off Aura a couple times. Aura is just kind of like a callback to another attempt I had to do a playthrough of the Kanto region. Way back. This, this story I know I said, but just so all the stories are in one place at the very least, I'll bring it up again. In Yellow... Way back in the old days of Let's Playing... Me and the friends that I made along the way would be were a lot more active in just... Doing YouTube activities. And a lot of things that we would do were races. I... no 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 I didn't quite screw it up until I auto walked into the hole. Lasai. And then I walk right on top of that Dugon. Just would be a good opportunity to cut away. Assuming I remember to. And of course, right before I cut, I only not only forget to actually showcase the new call. We I think this is one of the last moves Gyarados can learn. Well, yeah, I already know some outrage, so I think this is the better one. So Hydro Pump, as we saw with the Coach Trainer earlier on, pretty powerful but not that accurate. Since this is a TM that I can reteach any time, though, I think I'm gonna forget Waterfall for now. Maybe use it once or twice and then just get rid of it and reteach Waterfall. Because the only other downside about this move is, as you saw, it's a special attack. So it's not really gonna have. It's not really gonna make use out of Gyarados' best stats. And I'm kind of debating. I can't quite tell. But Hydra Pump is so much more powerful that I can't quite tell which is better. Just from a glance. I have to like pull out the calculator and actually write it down to actually see if Hydra Pump Gyarados or Waterfall Gyarados would do more damage. Either way, I think it's close enough that like just being able to use it more than five times and it not missing all the time is more than enough reason to like keep to Waterfall. But since we have the move, I think I want to showcase it at least a couple times for the heck of it. Now, just in case they fall down on Waterfall again, I might as well, like, get the easy one out of the way. And I think it's in... I think I got this puzzle down too, though. What was I saying before going on tangents? Was there anything else before I wanted to res resume the stories? None that I can think of. But yet, Order is kind of a Doug Trio that I was going to use in that race. I actually did get far enough in the race to actually catch it. But Order is actually named after my starter from the race. How it worked was we would do the battles. Wow, we're already at Arcuno. Let me stall for a little time to finish up my story. My two friends would do the races on their own time, but would encourage people to like make video responses, playing for the game in a similar race style, so you could actually like see if you could get through the game faster than they could. That's the long story short of it. An order was named after starter, but the adult trio was a completely different Pokemon. I think I, like I, that I named after one of the two friends that were doing the race. But here, this is what we're here for. I don't know how we're gonna get out, but we at least did the part that Kit me can always do. Get to Arakuno itself. Yeah, can't believe I actually got a legendary board on our hand. 
Now I'm gonna trust Twitch. I have a local recording just in case. But I'm gonna learn from my mistakes with Gyarados. Or uh, Snorlax, I should say. And save first. No, oh, pardon me one sec. And I guess it's a good thing that I completely forgot Jen Girl was paralyzed, so it's probably a good thing that that. Let's see. I think we, I can get. Since this is a legendary Pokemon, we shouldn't really pull out any punches. I think we can get away with having Gambalea out in the front. Jen and Girl will be a good backup with her electric moves. Though, actually, Jen and Girl could also, like, set up terrain. Yeah, I'm gonna backpedal on my plan. Because Jenna Girl can, like, set up a light screen for us. Which can, like, help make the rest of legendary Pokemon a bit easier to handle. I just gotta remember to heal her up. And Gambalea will be the backup in case we need another electric type. And what do you know? I have just one more paralyzed heal to my name. And still playing a super potion to burn. Including a normal potion. You know what? When else am I going to use this? Let's be real here. Alright, got a couple of revives. Super potion type repulsions. Might as well save again since... Did so before. Oh, we're already at like half an hour in recording. So I'm actually going to save this for next time. Uh, at least for the YouTube people. Thanks for tuning in. And next time we're, we'll take on Articuno and finish up Seafoam Islands.